In today's video, I want to cover another group of clone troopers to see what makes them unique amongst all others. And today's is the 91st Mobile Reconnaissance Corps, also referred to as 91st Recon Corps, which was actually a group of clones that we see in Episode 3. Exactly where though? Well, I'm going to get to that at the end of this video. The 91st Recon Corps fought in the Clone Wars under the leadership of Clone Commander Pons, and then under Commando Neo after Pons death. Overall leadership was given to Jedi General Adi Gallia, Stas Ali, and Mace Windu, depending on the battle. After the Clone Wars, the 91st was absorbed into the Empire's ranks. The entire 91st Recon Corps consisted of 36,864 troops divided into 16 regiments. One of its subunits was the Lightning Squadron, which was extremely instrumental in the Battle of Ryloth, and was a unit that Windu held in high regard for this quick effectiveness. Their armor had deep red markings and this characteristic mark on their armor. Like most other clone units, they started out with this phase one clone armor, but then later utilized ARF or ARF trooper armor and later phase two clone trooper armor and phase two bark trooper armor. Soldiers in the 91st usually carried DC-15A blaster rifles. Their vehicles had a little more variety than their weapons though, and the 91st used the LAAT-I gunships, and ground vehicles consisted of walkers such as all-terrain tactical enforcers, all-terrain recon transport, and bark speeders. At times, members of the 91st Recon Corps were also present aboard the Venator class Star Destroyer Endurance. The 91st fought in a ton of battles during the Clone Wars. One of their first battle was the Battle of Ryloth, where they fought under the direction of General Windu to liberate the capital of Lesu. Here the Lightning Squadron took out a bunch of droids to allow Windu, Stack, and Razor to join with the Cam Syndulla, a Twi'lek leader to take out the rest of the droids on the planet. Later in the fight, the clones and Mace are crossing a plasma bridge, when the droids turn it off so Mace has to use the force to push the clones across the bridge before they fall. Mace then hijacks a flying droid transport to fight the rest of the droids, while Stack and Razor conquer the control room and turn the bridge back on, until reinforcements can arrive and win the battle. The 91st later were present on Malastair, when the Republic's electroproton bomb creates a giant hole where Mace, Hawkeye, and Trapper discover the legendary Zillow Beast a creature so strong that even lightsabers had no effect against its hide. The beast is then taken to Coruscant, where it breaks loose, a bunch of people die, and it's a happy ending for everyone in the end. Except maybe the Zillow Beast, who Palpatine keeps to study in secret. I wonder if we'll ever see it again. Moving on to one of my favorite parts of the Clone Wars, when young Boba Fett tries to kill Mace Windu aboard the Star Destroyer Endurance. Fortunately for us, Fett doesn't kill Windu, but crashes the ship on planet Vancor. Most of the crew evacuates, but Fett, with the help of Aura Singh, Bosk, and Castus, capture Admiral Killian, Commander Pons, and one of the naval officers. Sadly, it's here that Aura Singh executes Pons, which leads to Neo taking control of the 91st. The 91st's next stage of action was the Battle of Patuna, now under the direction of Jedi General Adi Gallia. Their ship is attacked and boarded by General Grievous, who has a pretty cool lightsaber fight with Jedi Adi Gallia. But he defeats and captures her along with most of the 91st that are with her. Fortunately for them though, Plo Koon and the Wolf Pack save them, but not before Grievous runs and hides like he always does. At least Gallia survives the encounter, only to be killed later by Savage Opress. Later in the war, the 91st Recon Corps again served under the leadership of Mace Windu in the campaign for Anaxis Shipyards, where they fought alongside the 501st and the 212th in an effort to retake the Anaxis Assembly Complex from the Confederacy of Independent Systems, who were using the shipyards on the planet. The battle lasted for weeks, and the clones would have lost the battle if they hadn't recaptured Clone Commando Echo, who the Separatists were using to predict the Republic's strategies. Finally, the end of the war drew near, and the 91st found themselves in the Outer Rim sieges where the Republic deployed Neo, and the 91st to the planet Seleucami under General Stas Ali's command, who happened to be Adi Gallia's cousin. Master Ali was a powerful member of the Jedi Council, and was a survivor of the First Battle of Genosis, so she was a great lightsaber duelist and also was very strong in the Force. Unbeknownst to her though, and the rest of the Jedi, Supreme Chancellor Palpatine triggered Order 66, causing clone troopers across the galaxy to betray and kill their Jedi leaders. Because of the Order, Ali was executed by Neo and another 91st trooper while on a speeder bike patrol. She never even saw it coming. So that's where we see the 91st in Episode 3. After Order 66 and the transformation of the Republic into the Galactic Empire, the 91st Recon Corps continued to serve in its ground forces. Beyond that though, we haven't learned much more about what happened to them. So maybe we'll have to wait to find out more. What do you guys think? 
Neo is a pretty sweet character and it's pretty disappointing that it's him that kills Master Ali. Not as disappointing as Cody and Obi-Wan, but there are a few things that are. So, let me know in the comments below which was your favorite 91st battle. Hope you enjoyed this clones video, have an awesome rest of your day, and remember, the Force will be with you, always.